So a recent study of more than 300 people found that horror fans fared much better psychologically than non-horror fans did during the emotionally draining months of the 2020 pandemic. In this video, I'm going to be using this study, among others, to explore the effect that horror has on our brains and on psych our psychology, how it can be used to heal past trauma, and at the very end, I'm even going to explain why human beings are wired to derive pleasure from watching gore and violence on screen. These are the invaluable benefits of watching horror. I consider myself someone who's pretty well off psychologically speaking and after coming across this article, I actually think my love for horror may be a relatively big reason for it. This recent study on fear and emotional resistance was published in the Journal of Personality and Individual Differences. I quote, One reason that horror use may correlate with less psychological distress is that horror fiction allows its audience to practice grappling with negative emotions in a safe setting. Experiencing negative emotions in a safe setting, such as during a horror film, might help individuals hone strategies for dealing with fear and more calmly deal with fear eliciting situations in real life. In other words, watching horror films acts as a form of exposure therapy, wherein we expose ourselves to our fears in order to overcome them. Or in this case, we literally just expose ourselves to the emotion of fear in order to be able to deal with it better whenever we feel it in real life. Matthias Clayson, author of the book Why Horror Seduces, says people learn about their own fear responses and about regulating their own emotions through watching horror movies. At this point, horror movies haven't actually been scientifically proven as a treatment for trauma or phobias, but many researchers definitely understand their potential. Psychiatrist Leela R. Mugabe, Regional Medical Director for the California-based Community Psychiatry, is a horror movie fan who has experienced the genre's uh, cathartic effects, healing effects. She says, horror films could be used to desensitize individuals with phobias and various forms of trauma. Clayson of Aris University is now devising a study with his colleague, Colton Scriber, that will examine the clinical potential for horror and whether people with serious psychological trauma might find constructive uses for horror media. And if you think that's weird, make sure you stick around until the end whenever I explain why the human brain has literally evolved to get pleasure from watching door and violence. It's so weird. Nicole Johnson, author of this article that I originally found the study from, said that her mom died whenever she was just seven years old. And as such, this caused a complete fear of death, which is pretty understandable. Uh, and she spent all of her young adult life fearing that she would also die at a young age, just like her mother did. And so she would avoid doing any activities that could potentially harm her anyway. Uh, you know, she wouldn't even go riding bicycles with her friends just in case she would fall off and break her neck or something. But when she reached junior high, herself and a group of her friends watched an old horror slasher called Return to Horror High. Return to Horror High. It's a scream. This is what Nicole had to say about that experience. Afterward, I felt two things. Pride at having made it through the movie, and an immediate sense of relief tinged with euphoria. It was the best form of cathartic release. For the next several decades of my life, horror movies became a way for me to deal with tragedies and obstacles, including a divorce and the deaths of other loved ones. That's pretty incredible. But aside from having the potential to heal trauma patients, why do we as human beings just love horror so much? Well, it's because whenever we're watching horror, we are literally imagining what it would be like for us to be in that situation ourselves. It triggers our brain's fight or flight response, which causes an increase in heart rate, a rise in blood pressure, and of course an intense amount of endorphins rush our brains in order to help us to deal with the stress of the situation, alongside rushes of dopamine in order to motivate us to do whatever it takes to stay alive. But all of this is happening while we simultaneously know that we aren't actually really in danger, meaning the rush of endorphins re releasing in our brain becomes very pleasurable, and we essentially get a high of being fake scared. This is a feeling that you've been chasing since you were a kid, just you didn't realize it. Whenever you're playing tag on the street as a five-year-old, you're literally putting your brain into fight or flight mode while simultaneously know that if the other person catches you, you won't really die. Unless you're in Squid Game, that is. 
Well, okay, that explains the whole adrenaline junkie side of it, but what about all the blood, gore, and violence? Aren't the people who watch all those movies <laughs> sick bastards? <laughs> The answer is no. Morbid curiosity is something that everyone has to an extent. Some just have it more than others. It's something humans have evolved to have as a natural interest. We want to learn about the dangers of the world in order to increase our likelihood for survival. And therefore, we've evolved to get pleasure from learning about the more morbid aspects of human existence. Though one of the best ways to satisfy this natural human craving is to watch horror movies that showcase lots of bloody, disgusting violence, injuries, and death. So no, you're not a sick bastard if we're watching gore and violence on screen. But you are a sick bastard if you're not liking this video and subscribing to this YouTube channel. And as if all that wasn't enough, there's also a second high you get once the movie is finished. When we realize that a threat no longer exists or isn't real, the related parasympathetic nervous system takes over. It helps us to calm down, facilitating the rest and digest response in the body. This instinctive response may contribute to the feeling of relief after a threat has passed. And that relief is part of what researchers are tapping into with exposure therapy. We love the feeling of making it through a stressful event. And subsequently, the more stressful events we go through, the less stress they make us and the more pleasurable we find them. But what about people who get nightmares from horror movies? Well, this is why it's important that you use your own judgment. If you've never watched a horror movie in your life and you just jump straight into an animal binge one night, uh, chances are you're gonna get nightmares and it's gonna be too much for you. In exposure therapy, if you have an irrational fear of drowning, they don't just throw you into the sea or throw you into the deep end, right? They start small and build their way up. We well, should just do the exact same thing with horror if you feel it's necessary. Find the movies that are scary for you not just the scariest movies that have ever existed, because chances are they'll scare the absolute shit out of you and they will just make things worse. Start small, and if you're enjoying yourself, just build your way up to the more scary stuff. So while it doesn't work the exact same way for everyone, for most people, watching horror movies is the perfect way to help regulate your emotions. So go watch your horror movies and get scared shitless for Halloween with all your friends and family. I know I will. And if you want to know what my personal top three horror movies are, I've left the list in the pinned comments in the comment section. So you can go down there, check out my top three horror movies and let me know what your favorite horror movies are as well, if you like. I'll see you next time.